It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And we are in Coronado, California doing a twice annual maintenance on this beautiful tapestry project. Okay, so it's been six months and you can see that the crabgrass has really invaded our plants. But if you can look past the crabgrass, you'll know that the succulents are absolutely thriving and gorgeous. This is a three-year-old garden, I believe. I mean, take a look at that, at that aloe over there getting ready to throw off some really, really beautiful blooms. Everything in this garden looks spectacular. So I have Hannah and look who's come over from the dark side. It's my middle daughter, Alex. Uh, is helping us out today as well. So I'm really, really excited. My dream has always been, as you know, to have all of my kids involved in my business. And today I'm batting a thousand. Okay, so we are gonna get after all of these weeds. Let's, oh, we gotta look over here. Okay, um, see if there's anything of note. This is interesting what this Aeonium Sunburst is doing. You can see that She's pointing the wrong way, clearly pulling for the light. This is a somewhat, I guess it would be a northwestern exposure. The sun's going to set over here. Uh, so the majority of the energy during the day, at least at this time of the year, clearly is on that side. So the question is, what to do? Do I dig that up and flip her around, or do I let it ride? TBD. Okay. Uh, the aloe striata here is great. She's thrown off a beautiful pup. The thing about aloe striata is it tends to be a bit prone to mealybug, but I don't see any, so that is good. But then again, we are at ground zero, the mecca for succulents here on the island of Coronado, where the temperatures are so incredibly temperate. Look here, Anna, we've got alstroemeria. This is a seasonal bulb. Many of you probably have that in your garden. And I say let it ride. This is one that will come and go on its own, much like the sweet alyssum that's in my garden at home. It's a beautiful flower, and I, you know, why the heck not? Now, the Joe Hoke Desmediana, look at this. This is going to be a challenge to clean, but we're going to put our gloves on and make it go. More Alstroemeria here. Wow, this is just gonna be so rewarding. I can't wait for you all to see when we're done. Um, what I have Alex doing is taking the trowel and just really digging out the roots of this crabgrass. And believe it or not, after a couple of years, we'll get ahead of it. And it won't be, you know, every time we come, it's a little less of an issue. Okay, moving onward. Our Ficoria. Uh, it's looking fantastic. This is um, something of a tree succulent and it is going to require some judicious pruning in another year or two when it starts to compete with the house. But for now, I'm loving it. Oh, look at this potatorum, agave potatorum and the ruchia. This is a winner, winner chicken dinner of a combo, isn't it? Absolutely love that. And you know, at some point with all of my tapestry gardens, decisions have to be made. Do we maintain the tapestry or do we turn it more into a collector's garden or a specimen garden? And it's really up to the client and the amount of money that they want to invest in new plant material. Um, these Aeonium sunbursts are pointing the right way and looking super fantastic. You can see here our Mangave Jaguar bloomed out. So this will just require some cleaning up of the dead leaves and then cutting down lower on the stalk. She throws off pups and will regenerate. Um, if the spiders have moved on, go ahead and clean up the webbing. This is a real shady side of the garden. We have tried some bromeliads here and it looks like a couple of them are doing well. And this one, not so much, right? But no, no worries. We'll just get rid of that, clean it up, and expose the beautiful uh, plants that are thriving. 
So yeah, this is looking really, really good. We've got a little Brainia Hawaiian snow bush. These are just iconic here in Coronado. They literally grow like weeds. Um, and it's a really, really pretty succulent compatible plant. So I'm gonna let that ride. Even the little aloe vera here in this pot, which was kind of a placeholder, uh, cause this isn't getting any water. Uh, it's not getting any irrigation cause I don't like drippers going into plants and this is on drip. So it took a little bit of a hit in the summer and got a little dried out. But all we have to do is just cut off all of the dead and expose all the beautiful healthy tissue. And this will be good to go for another year. Look at that. Isn't that just... Whew, this is so fun. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, here's some little blooms from the Jaguar. You can let these go if you want. They're, they're kind of a nothing burger, so I recommend cutting them off as opposed to encouraging them. It just looks tidier. Then over yonder here, <laughs> Pat still got her Christmas decor up. It's only January 5th, so I guess I'll allow it. Um, the blue glow is looking great. This little Bacarnia recurvata looks super. And another shady side of the garden finds everything looking really good. This looks amazing. This combo of bromeliad and mangabe. Love, love, love it. And then this little burst of aeonium, that color, that's spectacular. So yes, I am super, super happy with how this is looking. And um, we'll continue with our weeding and catch up with you in a few. Okay, I know it seemed grim, but with three people on it, it took us just under two hours to weed and refurbish this entire beautiful garden. Hannah worked over here and she limbed up the dead off of the Bacarnia recurvata. She trimmed back all of the offshoots from the Mangave jaguars. Pulled, you know, there weren't a lot of weeds over here in the shade garden. Uh, so it was mostly just cleaning up detritus, clearing off spider webs, dusting plants off, and treating with uh, some ortho home defense, a little bit of mealy bug that she identified. Over here, same thing, just spectacular. My goodness. So it is January here in Southern California. I mean, just barely winter time. And because the climate is so incredibly mild, this is a really great time for our succulents, assuming and predicting that we don't get an onslaught slot or a deluge of rain. Uh, these plants will absolutely thrive in these temperatures where it's 50s, 60s, uh, Fahrenheit during the day dropping down into 40s or high 30s at night. See the little aloe vera. Hannah did such a beautiful job um, finishing the cleaning of this plant. I talk about this one a lot. It's the most, you know, one of the most common succulents known to man. But look how pretty it looks as an individual managed maintained specimen in a green pot. I mean, you just can't beat that. It's gorgeous. Bringing pots into your garden is so important to bring height and to, to bring some elevation and interest. This was, this was the most challenging uh, due, to the, due to the crabgrass. But again, you know, Alex and I knocked it out. So all that I, all that I noted in here of issue uh, was the crabgrass and picking up some of these, you know, Brazilian pepper leaves from the, tr from the street tree. Uh, right here, something that I wanted to share with you, this is Crassula campfire and it had bloomed out uh, and gotten really, really leggy. And all you have to do if your Crassula campfires have bloomed out is just cut them back. See here, uh, you can tell right here where it was cut, how it has budded out from beneath the cut. So you will get lots of wonderful new growth. You know, you kind of have to look at it. Doesn't look the greatest right now, but in no time at all, 
it will come back with new baby plant material um, and be just as good as gold. So feel free to cut your castle campfires back as far as you want at this time of the year. Um, over here, oh, look at this. This little Kalanchoe orgialis. How pretty it looks amongst those aeoniums getting ready to throw off its adorable little yellow flowers. Over here, I, we meant, I mentioned earlier, this Aeonium sunburst was pointing the wrong way. Um, so I pulled it out of the ground and flipped it around and reset it. It looks much better now. The Agave Desmediana Joe Hoke is, thank God we tipped this plant when we planted it initially. And thank goodness we did because it's starting to kind of pull toward the sun, pull back a little bit too. That's kind of important when you're planting your succulent garden is to be a bit mindful of the, your exposure, knowing ahead of time that where the sun is the brightest and the strongest throughout the day, that's the direction your plant is gonna head. So plant accordingly. All right, well, another one in the books. We will see Pat again in six months. Get out in the garden, have a lot of fun, and be sure in the comments to wish Hannah a happy birthday. She's 24 today. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with Hannah and Alex. Succulent tip of the day. Your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.